Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This will be my full Marvel What If Season 2 Episode 9 finale video. There are a whole bunch of Easter eggs and references. We just got the What If Season 3 trailer too. I've already done a video for it. I posted it on my channel, so we'll add a link for that at the end of this. So it sounds like we might actually be getting What If Season 3 in like a couple months. Like why drop a teaser trailer for Season 3 if you're not going to drop episodes really soon? If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. Whenever they do wind up releasing that, of course I will do episode videos for that too. But careful for spoilers, if you haven't seen the episode yet, we'll start at the beginning, work our way through shot by shot, talking about the many, the many Easter eggs and references. Like there were so many things in this episode, it took me forever to take all the notes to even record this video. Lots of zooming, lots of enhancing all over the episode, even the intro. But starting with the episode title, What If Strange Supreme Intervened? It's meant to be a parallel to the season one finale, which was What If the Watcher Broke His Oath and Intervened, basically. They did a fully customized Marvel Studios intro, and it's the long version with the full Marvel Studios fanfare. They've done that for a couple of movies now, but this is the first time they've done it for an actual series. Basically replacing all the MCU characters and scenes with scenes from What If and characters, both season one and season two so far. They just did it for Guardians of the Galaxy 3, they did one for Chadwick Boseman in Black Panther Wakanda Forever, they also did one for Stan Lee in the first Captain Marvel movie, so they'll continue to do stuff like that every once in a while. There's so many easter eggs and references in this intro, so just starting at the beginning here, it starts with Iron Man's Sakarian Trash Buster armor. Happy Hogan is the Freak, aka Purple Hulk. It also has a quote from him in episode 3, and is taken from the script, like the font here is almost like they copy pasted the lines from the scripts, and they did it for a couple different characters across the intro. It's basically him referencing getting his powers. T'Challa Star-Lord with a quote from him in his original episode, Bill Foster Goliath with a quote from him in his episode, Kahori, Red Guardian is here because he's in that missing episode that they moved to season 3. I literally just posted a trailer video for What If Season 3. The footage is mostly taken from that Red Guardian episode. Originally, it was supposed to happen during Season 2. No idea why they moved it to Season 3. If you look, there's even a line of dialogue from the script, so it definitely seems like their plans changed on the fly really late in the game. It just seems kind of funny, like this Phantom episode where we saw Red Guardian and he spoke this dialogue, like, oh yeah, I remember that season 2 episode. Everybody's gonna be scratching their heads if they don't understand what it means. This is Supreme Strange, it seems like from season 1, Captain Carter with the line that she said in her very first episode. This is the same scene of Captain America throwing the shield in the regular Marvel Studios intro, but it's Captain Carter instead. They basically give a lot of the same scenes from that original intro, just replacing them with what-if characters. To the right is the Watcher's outline against the stars that you see in all the What If intros when he's narrating the intro. This is the scene of Hela learning space kung fu in airbending in her episode. To the right is Supreme Strange from his original episode in season 1. On the left is Iron Man on Sakaar winning the race in his custom car that turned into his version of the Hulkbuster suit. To the left of him is Cohorty from her original episode. In front on the right is Winter Soldier Steve Rogers from the episode in season 2. In the back is Scarlet Witch, Nick Fury, a couple of the other characters from the Marvel 1602 episode in that scene. To her left in the back is Bruce Banner Hulk, also from that same episode. As they zoom out, there's a ton more scenes, like a ton more references here. Some of them are season one, some are season two. Starting on the left, there's Captain Marvel from her episode in season one. She's also fighting Thor in another scene in one of the other letters, like inside the letter. Behind them is Ramonda during the Killmonger season one episode where he killed T'Challa and took over Wakanda. To the right is the younger Ego the Living Planet from Season 2 Episode 1. Further right is Iron Man and the Donut from the Iron Man 2 scene in Season 1. To the left is Black Widow with Red Guardian Shield from Season 1. Way back here is the Grand Master in the Iron Man Season 2 episode. Behind him are the Avengers from the Marvel Zombies episode in Season 1 before they turned into zombies. There's another Captain Marvel scene below them, and then there's another Captain Marvel scene from Season 1 over here. This one is Gamora from the Season 1 finale, and as they continue to pan out, the scene changes and starts rotating around from that scene in the finale from Season 1. This Winter Soldier is from Season 1. There's Infinity Ultron next to him from Season 1. There's a Howard the Duck from Season 1. This is Nick Fury from Season 1 on top of him after it switches. This Thor is also meant to be from Season 1. There are a couple other characters that I'm probably missing here, so if you spotted any that I didn't mention in this part of the intro, just write them below in the comments. But like, you could watch the intro like 5 or 6 times, zooming and enhancing over every single pixel, and still find new stuff. Somebody clearly spent like an entire year making this intro. 
The actual episode starts with the Watcher narrating against the sky in the aftermath of the episode 8 Marvel 1602 episode, basically. Peggy Carter is still trapped there, but she did fix the universe it was reset back to normal. He does a recap of her story since season 1 and her backstory with clips from all of her episodes, I think to bookend her storyline at the end of this episode, because the way they ended her storyline at the end of the finale here, it was kind of like the old man Captain America ending in Avengers Endgame where she takes the long way around like, oh, take me on a tour of the multiverse before you take me home. Old Man Captain America's final mission to return the Infinity Stones, but then also taking a little bit of a detour on the way back for about 80 plus years living a life with his Peggy Carter before he came back to present day. So it almost seems like they're telling us that Peggy Carter won't be like the main focus in season three the way she was during season one and season two. When the Watcher says her loss of her Steve Rogers could have consumed her, it's meant to foreshadow Supreme Strange becoming the main villain in the episode because he became obsessed with bringing his Christine back. And they really buried the lead on this Supreme Strange reveal. I'm totally fine with him being the actual main villain for season two. It makes sense for the character that that's the arc that he would be on. Like he seemed like he'd been kind of corrupted during season one, but the way they ended his storyline in season one, it seemed like he'd repented. So one of my only complaints about the finale, it's a relatively minor complaint, is that they should have used like a couple more post credit scenes to set up that character turn for him so that it wasn't like, oh, hey, by the way, I'm super evil now and I'm going to kill everybody trying to bring my universe back. He's using her as bait to capture Cohorty again because he's collecting all the most powerful villains and heroes from the multiverse to fuel his multiverse forge in a bid to recreate his original universe and bring his Christine back. The funny thing about this, you really want to get into the weeds, like if you're not a big comic book reader, this is a power that Franklin Richards has, like what Doctor Strange Supreme is trying to do is something that Franklin Richards just has as one of his regular old powers. Basically creating entire universes, in fact during that more recent Secret Wars that I just referenced, at the end of that Franklin Richards basically helps them fix the multiverse by just recreating all the dead universes one at a time with Mr. Fantastic's help. During Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, John Krasinski's Reed Richards even said that Franklin existed in this universe like he had multiple children, Franklin was one of them, so Supreme Strange was really dead set on bringing his Christine back, he should have just gone to Franklin Richards. He calls out her wearing the Union Jack on her uniform, that's the British flag, I talked about that in my previous Marvel 1602 episode. The Guardians of the Multiverse that he references was the name of their Multiverse Avengers team in Season 1. The Watcher then does a recap of Supreme Strange's story to sort of set up the turn in the episode. They use the normal What If intro though, no special changes to this. He takes her to his new Sanctum Sanctorum that he's been using since Season 1, calling it the Sanctum Infinitum, like the Infinity Sanctum. I'm assuming that means it also exists in its own little pocket dimension and not some random universe on a random Earth. He shows her all the villains he's been collecting from different universes in the little globes when they start panning across them from left to right. Like this is another big zooming and enhancing kind of moment. Took me a while to do all these notes. They start with the Infinity Ultron from season one. Here's the weird thing though. He's got all the Infinity Stones in his armor, even though later in the episode they show Killmonger from that same episode in season one wearing the Infinity Stones in his armor. That might just be a small animation error because like I don't think there are multiple Infinity Ultrons out there running around as living Infinity Gauntlets. Below him, the Gnome is actually a character from Marvel Comics just called Gnome. He's actually a scientist. He's mostly like a Namor villain. There's a Thanos with the Infinity Gauntlet next to him. There's a Loki next to him. A Hela next to Loki on the far left. I think this is meant to be Wenwu and the Collector from Season 1 below them. Some of the characters here in the background are a little too blurry to make out, but they basically have all the characters breaking out later in the episode, so I'll point some of the other ones that they don't show you on the shelves here. This one is Rocket with that giant gun, young Peter Quill from episode 1. This one is actually the Hulk with the powers of Thor wielding a sword laced with gamma energy like he crackles with gamma-like electricity. He's actually based on a very recent Marvel comic book just the last couple of years called Banner of War when he and Thor basically trade powers like Thor gets the powers of the Hulk and Hulk gets the powers of Thor. The reason why this is the Hulk with Thor's powers and not the other way around is because Thor's hair is still super long when he hulks out. He also doesn't have any special sleeving armor like this Hulk does. There's a Corvus Glaive next to them, there's another Thor on the far right. Supreme Strange makes fun of the Watcher for never intervening in the affairs of people from the third dimension even though he literally did that during season one. He also confirms the Watcher is a fifth dimensional being, sort of explaining how he's able to exist this way and view all of these different universes in his little alternate dimension base like they're watching a bunch of different television shows. It also explains how he's so powerful too. 
she makes a bunch of movie references, Gremlins, Aliens, Jurassic Park, been catching up on that list that we saw during Captain America Winter Soldier. Those are all meant to be movies where dangerous creatures escaped wreaking havoc, but other secret reference here, foreshadowing Doctor Strange Supreme's evil turn, in all of those movies, the actual main villain winds up being some evil person, not the actual creatures themselves. It's meant to be a reference to like all the villains here at the end of the episode wind up giving them their weapons to help defeat Strange Supreme and he winds up being the actual main villain. She gets her upgraded modern armor because she was still wearing her medieval era armor. He sends her to a universe where Red Skull was successful in taking over the planet. This is his face on Mount Rushmore and the scene is basically meant to be a reference to Hawkeye versus Quicksilver in Avengers Age of Ultron. Bet she did not see that coming. You didn't see that coming? I'm sure everybody was watching this scene pointing up at the screen just like going full Leonardo DiCaprio meme like ah she's doing the thing. Before she winds up running into her though the Watcher shows up explaining the backstory of this universe and warns her about getting involved when he says that he can't bear to narrate what happens next is because he knows everything that's happening with Supreme Strange like the truth of it all but because his oath is to never intervene he's allowing it all to proceed. Like events will just unfold however they're supposed to unfold. I'm not supposed to get involved. Cohorty explains everything to Captain Carter what's really going on with Supreme Strange and then he yoinks them back to his Sanctum Sanctorum. They both wind up revealing the truth of the matter and he admits to it eventually. When they're fighting and they start panning across all the different villains as Captain Carter's deciding which ones to release, this one is a cowboy Loki, this one's another Happy Hogan freak, Purple Hulk basically. Below him are some characters we saw before like this is the collector from season 1, there's a wicked vampire looking Howard the Duck next to him. I'm not sure who this crazy tentacle being is, he looks like he has a gem in his forehead but there are a couple characters like that and none of them have tentacles. We get another great protector dragon and when she starts freeing them the dragon actually crashes into a bunch of others freeing even more people. There are a couple different rooms and there's a bunch of stuff going on in the background but just starting with this first one they start with Happy Hogan Freak, Adult Star Lord, a Shatauri, there's a vision behind them, Corvus Glaive, Cowboy Loki, behind her here are Cull Obsidian fighting the Collector, there's another Captain Marvel in the background here too, here's a Proxima Midnight, there's a bunch of randos that are all blurry in the distance here like random troops like Dark Elves, Asgardian soldiers, soldiers from the Ten Rings army. We go to the next room, we get another Wenwu with the Ten Rings, his army fighting more Shatauri in the background, there's a Korok here, a Skrull, there's the Hulk with the powers of the Thor, the Banner of War. We get that crazy looking rocket, a Dark Elf, they run into a zombie Scarlet Witch from Season 1 with a bunch of zombies, it's the same group that we saw during Season 1 like just after the events of those episodes it sounds like Supreme Strange captured them. Then Hela takes control of them with the power of the eternal flame in Odin's treasure vault like she did in Thor Ragnarok with her undead army. When she says zombies my kind of party that's also a reference to her scene in Thor Ragnarok because it's literally an undead zombie army that she resurrects. I also think that they're implying in the episode that this Hela is actually meant to be the main 616 version of Hela from Thor Ragnarok. I think that's why when Surtur comes in and says his line also from Thor Ragnarok I am Asgard's doom they both recognize each other like they clock each other for a second like wait a minute it's you oh it's you and they lunge at each other again. So I think the idea is that she disappears at the end of that movie people are like did she die? Obviously she probably did not die you don't see a body they're not dead. Supreme Strange probably just yoinked both of them at that moment and put them in prisons. Cohorty references Queen Isabella from her episode at the end when mocking Hela telling her to kneel like the last person that did that didn't end up so great. They almost fall afoul of Thanos with the Infinity Gauntlet who is ultimately killed by Killmonger using his Infinity Gauntlet snapping his fingers. How ironic. Trying to snap them away but also snapped away yourself. And it is meant to be the Killmonger from the end of season 1. Cohorty uses her powers to teleport him directly out of the armor real quick fix to that problem. Back in the air we see two versions of Thor attacking each other with their hammers causing this massive explosion and Captain Carter is able to transfer the infinity stones to her armor giving her a huge power upgrade. She gets a couple of those later in the episode too. Their fight scene with all the different infinity stone powers one at a time is pretty cool like all the different combinations they use here. It's sort of like a little kid with their toy box like okay we've got a bunch of different toys here let's just make them do really cool stuff. Some really cool easter eggs in the actual way that they animate this too. When they're blasting each other with cosmic energy they also use the Kirby crackle effect. In animation it was just Jack Kirby's way of depicting cosmic energy like really powerful cosmic energy. They use it during season 1 when the Watcher is using his powers. 
You've also probably seen it many times during the Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse movies. The duplication spell here is a reference to Avengers Infinity War in his fight with Thanos. Captain Carter also uses her reality stone to do the exact same thing. They start playing the Doctor Strange theme music. They play a little bit of Captain Carter's theme music, a little bit of Avengers theme music mixed in here too. When he turns all of her copies into butterflies, that's also a spell he used during Avengers Infinity War. And he sends her into a mind space version of a fake reality, tempting her with the idea that he can send her to a reality like a universe where she could be with her Steve again. When she escapes, he starts portaling everyone just directly into his forge. They start falling. Everyone starts throwing their ultra powerful weapons and armor to her to even the odds just a little bit more. And it's another one of those moments where like you can picture a little kid with a bunch of different Marvel toys, like trying to give one character every single weapon. Like how many weapons can we put on this character? How powerful would that make them? Who cares if this makes sense? It just looks really cool. Maybe, maybe Marvel and Disney will start selling this as an actual toy, like her action figure here wearing all these weapons and armors. Notice when Hela throws her her crown, she says, give them hell. They actually spelled it right in the subtitles in this episode. It's H-E-L. That's the Asgardian version of the underworld, the alternate dimension where Odin banished her in Thor Ragnarok. She uses the time stone to stop their falling. And when Strange says that he mastered that a long time ago, that's a reference to his original episode in season one where he used his time stone to reverse time over and over again, trying to find different ways to save his Christine. One of the Thors gives her his hammer. Wenwu gives them their 10 rings and the banner of War Hulk gives her his sword and spear. It's Odin's spear from his reality. Cohorty is able to portal everyone back to their homes, their original universes, and she uses her space dome powers to wield Thor's hammer. The reason why she can do that, because I know there are a lot of questions about this, like, is she worthy? Is that how she can pick the hammer up? I think the way that they're explaining the logic here is that she's using telekinesis, like her space stone powers, to wield the hammer. She's not actually physically touching it, and that's how she can pick it up. But she can wear the ten rings because those don't have a worthiness enchantment on them. Like, literally anybody off the street could wear the ten rings and use them. When Supreme Strange starts to transform into a demon, this is meant to be a reference to the Lord of the Rings movies and the Hobbit movies, like the Gandalf versus the Balrog fight. And in the Hobbit movies, Benedict Cumberbatch was actually the voice of Smaug the dragon. He kind of loses control during this fight too, so his demonic side kind of starts to take over his body. One of the only details here though is that Captain Carter is able to grab all the Infinity Stones in her bare fist and punch him with them. Normally that would take her arm off, like that would almost kill her to do that. Captain America, for instance, during Avengers Endgame could have been the one to wield the Infinity Gauntlet, but even with all of his super soldier powers, like his enhanced physiology, it almost would have killed him and it almost would have destroyed his entire body, like it would definitely take in his arm. But again, I think this is one of those moments in the episode where they're like, who cares if it makes sense? It just looks cool. He winds up sacrificing himself to the forge, giving it enough cosmic energy to power it, bringing his universe back and his Christine back, but at the expense of his existence. Like it literally wipes him from that entire timeline so he'll never be born at any point during that timeline. The Watcher yoinks Captain Carter before she dies, bringing her to his base and sending Cohorty back to her universe. He takes her to Central Park in Strange Supremes, recreated now a resurrected universe. We see his version of Christine alive, but as he explains, Supreme Strange basically wiped himself from all existence, so it was like he never existed in this reality. When the Watcher agrees to take her back to the present day of her universe, she asks him to take her on a tour of the multiverse first and reveals Loki's multiverse tree to her from the end of Loki season two, confirming where this sort of fits in the timeline. You gotta imagine Loki sitting in the middle there just like holding it all together. And the reason why they can perceive it this way is because the Watcher has brought her to a higher dimension so they can perceive the multiverse as if it were an actual tree. That's kind of the way that Loki is also sitting there on the rock at the end of time. It's meant to be in a higher dimension so that he perceives timelines as different ropes. So now the big question is, does that mean Captain Carter will not come back in season three? Like, did they wrap up her story with this scene here? Like, you've done a good job, we'll take you home, that's it, no more for me. It does seem like what if season three will be the actual final season, and it does seem like it's actually coming pretty soon. I just did a much bigger trailer video for that and explained all the episodes that we know about so far. Like, there's supposed to be a Moon Knight episode, a Spider-Man episode. Even though we didn't see Spider-Man in season two, he will be back in season three. Generally, season two felt like it was pretty solid. Like, Marvel 1602, probably my favorite episode. They really should have focused more episodes in that 1602 universe. They could have done an entire season in the 1602 universe. 
If you spotted any other Easter eggs or references in the episode that I didn't mention in the video, just write them below in the comments and also just post all your favorite moments from the season. Really big reminder too is that the next big series is going to be Echo. I'll be doing a couple episode videos for that. And really meta Easter egg too, the person who played Cohorty, Devry Jacobs, is actually playing a different character during Echo, but I don't think she's meant to be connected to her Cohorty character. Like it's not a multiverse situation or anything like that. Click here for that brand new What If Season 3 trailer and click here for all my What If episodes. Thank you so much for watching. Happy holidays, everyone, and I'll see you guys in the next one.